Hey, what's up guys? It's Jordan from Teasers Books and today I'm going to talk about the books that I've read in October and November. I didn't get a lot of reading done in October or November and I was in a bit of a reading slump and there was one book that is completely at fault for that, so we'll get to that in a few minutes. But I am excited to share the books that I read with you guys in the last couple of months because I did find some books that surprised me both in a good way and a bad way, so let's get into it. So the first book that I read was Milk and Honey by Rupi Kaur. This this book is a classic um, kind of on Instagram and Visco. It's a very trendy uh, poetry collection and I really didn't know what to expect going into it because I thought it was going to be very flowery kind of writing but it was actually the total opposite of that. It was very aggressive and direct and to the point and talked about really important issues that are currently happening in the world. I actually really enjoyed it. I gave it three out of five stars. I don't believe that it lives up to the hype that I've kind of seen around this collection but I do think that it was really good and was unexpected and that's why I enjoyed it so much. Is this annoying? I don't know. Hopefully that's not too annoying because otherwise I will be not lit because this is what it looks like without it on. <laughs> Very different. I'm definitely happy that I finally got around to reading it so that I can know what everybody's talking about and I did really enjoy a few of the poems. I just don't think it lived up to the hype that surrounds the story. The next book that I read, I was so, so excited for. I checked the book out from my local library and audiobooked the first two hours of the story and was really, really liking it. So I went out and bought my own physical copy to continue reading after my audiobook timed out. I was so disappointed with this story. I can't believe that I didn't enjoy it because so many people say it's one of their absolute favorite stories. And that is The Starless Sea by Erin Morgenstern. I I am so sad I didn't enjoy this book. I ended up giving it two out of five stars. The only reason it got two instead of one is because I do really like her writing. It is very lyrical and beautiful and you can just kind of fall into her writing. The problem with this story is that nothing really happened and it was so confusing. Maybe I'm just not smart enough to read this story but I know that a lot of people have kind of felt this way. It's not just me but I was reading it and going what is the point? of this. Is there a point to this? I don't think so. I really didn't understand why we were reading about this. There was no real conclusion. There was no real story arc. The characters didn't really grow throughout the story. If anything, they got more dull as the story went on. I struggled to get through this book. This book took me almost the entire month of October. Actually, let me check what day I put it on Goodreads. I might have finished it. Yes, I finished it November 14th and I'm pretty sure I started it right after I posted my TBR video in October. So like the first or second week of October. The fact that it took me that long to read this book just goes to show how much I struggled to get through it because normally once I get so far into a book I can kind of crank it out in a couple days but I just couldn't do it. How do you even describe this book because nothing happened? Oh my god. The Starless Sea is basically about this boy who finds this book and checks it out at the library to discover that one of the chapters is written about him and he doesn't understand how this could happen because the book was published before he was even born and I thought it was going to be this crazy urban fantasy kind of story where you go into this new world that you didn't know existed but also kind of paralleled the human world and it was just not that at all. When we finally got to the world, which seems like it took forever to do, nothing was there and nothing was explained and the magic system wasn't explained and everything was just super open but not in a good way. It wasn't in a way where you could kind of draw your own conclusions because there was a conclusion, it just really wasn't anything at the same time. I know I'm not making a lot of sense, but if you read this book, you probably understand what I mean. If you do like books that are very, very, very open-ended, then you will probably enjoy this because the writing is incredible. She is a fantastic writer. I'm not gonna sit here and say that she's not a good writer because she is. I just didn't vibe with the story. I also think that the way the story was laid out also made it difficult to fall into what was happening. Chapters alternated between the main story with the boy who found the book in the library with other stories, just random stories, and eventually they connect near the end of the book, but to read the story about the boy, that which was interesting, but then get thrown off every chapter to read about something else completely not relevant to that, 
was really difficult and made it really hard to get through the story. I don't think I am interested in picking up The Night Circus after reading this because I'm worried the same thing will happen, that it'll be super open-ended and not something that I vibe with, and I really didn't vibe with this book, so this might be the last book I read by her, which is really sad because I do really like her writing. If there are people out there that really liked The Night Circus but didn't like The Starless Sea, please let me know down below because maybe I would consider picking it up if a lot of people really enjoyed The Night Circus that didn't like this book, but if you don't like either of them and I don't like this one, then I'm probably not gonna like the other one, so it's definitely not high up on my TBR to read anything else from her in the future. Yeah, this was a real letdown for me um, and put me in a major reading slump. I did not, because I was determined to finish this. I was like, I'm over halfway through. Why is this taking me so long? I'm determined to finish it and I would pick it up and just get so bored and I'd only read like 10 pages at a time because then the chapter would end and I wouldn't want to read about this random thing happening. So. This was a struggle and a half for me and I'm glad I finally finished it, but it was not worth my money and not worth my time. And the next book that I read was a book I was super excited for and I was lucky enough to get a signed copy, which is super exciting, and that is The Brightest Night by Jennifer L. Armentrout. If you haven't been here before, I'm a huge fan of Jennifer L. Armentrout. She's one of my favorite writers. I'll read anything she writes. All of her stories are incredible, they're super easy, fun romance novels, normally with a bit of magic involved, and they are just so good, so so good. This story in particular is about aliens and it is a sequel to a previous series called the Lux series, you might have heard about it. A lot of people compare the main love interest Damon in that story to Jace from the Mortal Instruments series, so if you like Jace then you will definitely like the Lux series because the humor is very similar. Brightest Night is the third book in the series that I'm currently reading by her. I don't even remember what the series is called. Origin, it's the Origin series. This is the third book in the Origin series which takes place after the Lux series. It follows this girl named Evelyn in this world where aliens have just invaded Earth and there's a lot of stuff happening. There's riots and people are getting sick and people are blaming the aliens for bringing a disease to Earth. And Evelyn kind of gets dragged into this world filled with aliens and politics and finds out that she has been lied to her whole life. Super dramatic, super intense. The love interest is in the prequel series and he is fantastic. He's super sassy and I just really like the romance between the two of them. This book in particular I didn't enjoy as much as I was hoping to. First off, I found out at the very end of the story that this is not the last book in this series. I don't know why this keeps happening to me, but I keep reading books thinking that they're the last book in the series to find out that the author decided to write more. So I'm sitting here with 20 pages left going, oh my god, nothing's wrapped up. We haven't seen anything about this character. This character is MIA. What is happening? To then finish the book on a huge cliffhanger and find out that there's gonna be more books. I don't know how many, but I know she's planning on writing more. So I'm excited for more books, but reading it, I was expecting a conclusion and there wasn't any. And second off, this book didn't really have a lot going on. It was a lot of fluff between the two characters and I enjoy that kind of stuff and I think she does a really good job with it, but nothing was really going on. They were in the same setting for the entire story, but the setting was not explored. They didn't go out and look at this camp that they were in. They didn't go out and meet new people really. They were just kind of in their little bubble of the two of them and dealing with personal problems. And it did not have to be this big of a book to deal with those problems. I am excited to read more about this series, but overall I gave this one 3.75 slash four out of five stars. It's definitely one of the lowest ratings I've ever given a Jennifer L. Armatrout book. Um, which is too bad because I was really looking forward to this one, but I did manage to get through it in two days as per usual with her stories, so if you are looking for something really fast and really easy, I recommend anything by her. And the last book that I read in the last two months is the Shadow and Bone series by, not the series, the book, by Leigh Bardugo. I read this book in one sitting, surprisingly. 
I went into this book not expecting a lot because I heard that this series isn't really that good and everyone likes the Six of Crows series better. So I was mostly just reading this book so that I wouldn't be spoiled by the TV show and then could enjoy the TV show and also get to the Six of Crows series, which is the series I'm really amped to read. I really, really liked this. I think it's because it's one of those like classic contem contemporaries. It's not a contemporary don't go into it thinking it's a contemporary. It was one of those classic fantasy novels that kind of kicks off from the get-go. You have all of these amazing characters with really diverse personalities and I just really liked it. I thought it was really fast-paced. I really really like the world and the Grisha universe and I'm excited to see what happens in the next two books. I do think though reading this one book, I don't know what happens in the other two books because I haven't read them yet, but I feel like you could read this book as a standalone almost and it would be a very open standalone fantasy novel but it could be standalone. A lot happened and so much happened that I feel like some authors would have dragged this out through three books but it happened in one book. I'm eager to see what she's doing with these next books in the trilogy um, but I did really enjoy this. I liked all the characters. I don't like the Darkling. I don't really understand why people have an obsession with him. I think he's a really good villain and I think she writes a really good villain with a conflicting... Is, she, is he conflicted? I don't think he's conflicted. I think he knows exactly what he wants and he knows how to get it done. I'll have to read the rest of the books to find out but I see all of these people online talking about the Darkling and I just don't get it so we will see. But yes, yeah, so this was a surprise for me. I gave this four out of five stars and I am very excited to continue. So those are all the books that I managed to read in the last two months. Unfortunately it was only four of them and hopefully I can be a little bit better in December and crank out a few books to up my total reads for the year. Let me know what books you guys have read recently down below, I would love to know, or you can leave a smiley face emoji down below um, if you don't want to comment or don't have anything to say. I'm not offended if you don't have anything to say. I love getting emoji comments just because it means I know that you were here and enjoyed my video. So yes, thanks so much for watching. You can follow me on my Twitter, my Instagram, and my blog. I'll put all the links down below. <laughs> Books are falling. Thanks so much for watching and keep on reading guys. Bye!